Hello everyone, my name is Oktay, Oktay Alger, and welcome to this week's presentation. Uh, we're going to be talking about Draker's uh, classroom management theory. You know, uh, in this presentation, we're going to be talking about, you know, who uh, Draker's is, and, you know, what's his theory, and, you know, how we can, you know, uh, use this theory. So let's look at the outline itself. Well, what we're going to be talking about first today is we're going to be talking about who's like Rudolf Drakers is, you know, what made them famous, you know, uh, what's uh, what's his actual fear that we're going to be talking about. And after that, we're going to be talking about uh, four goals of misbehaviors from like Rudolf Drakers. And after that, uh, we're going to look at how we can combat these four goals of misbehaviorism. So let's start with Rudolf Drakers himself. Well, Rudolf Drakers uh, was a psychiatrist and an educator known for adapting Alfred Adler's system of individual psychology into a pragmatic method. Well, Alfred Adler, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he was a psychotherapist. And he was the founder of individual psychology, if I'm not mistaken. So what uh, Rudolf Drakers did was uh, he, uh, you know, adapted at their system of individual psychology into a pragmatic method. So what does that mean is that uh, he took his uh, method and, you know, he tried to look at why uh, students are misbehaving and, you know, he looked at the reasons behind it and he wanted to, you know, understand the reasoning behind them, reasonings behind that. So by understanding the reasons behind them, uh, he thought that, you know, uh, we can combat these misbehaviorism and we can stimulate some cooperation between us, teachers and students themselves. So that was his way of uh, adapting into a pragmatic method. Well, uh, he also thinks that, you know, uh, mutual respect is key in the classroom. Uh, it's the key to discipline. And, you know, if the teacher and the students have a mutual respect to each other, uh, you know, uh, this mutual respect is going to motivate cooperation, he thinks that. And uh, in addition to that, he also thinks that, uh, you know, students have a desire, you know, they have a desire to become part of a group. And, you know, they want to contribute to that group, you know, they want to belong somewhere. Uh, so what he calls this uh, belonging desire is that he calls it genuine goal of social behavior. Uh, so if the student, you know, just isn't able to, you know, get into a group and if for some reason they can't feel belong to the classroom or any sort of group themselves, they will you know, resort to the uh, four misbehaviors that we are going to be talking about right now. So let's look at the four misbehaviors themselves. Uh, so the four goals of misbehaviorism is, you know, the first one is gaining attention, second one is gaining power and control, third one is gaining revenge, and fourth one is displaying feelings of inadequacy. You know, they are pretty self-explanatory by their names. So what do they mean is that uh, if the student itself or themselves cannot, you know, just become part of a group, they, for some reason, just can't feel belonged uh, to anywhere, any uh, sort of group, you know, they will resort to these methods, they will resort to these goals, and they are, you know, they will try to achieve these goals, you know, they will try to achieve the teacher's attention, and they will try to achieve power and control in the classroom. And after they, you know, achieve some power and control, they will try to, you know, gain revenge uh, against the teacher. And at the very end, they are going to, you know, end up displaying feelings of inadequacy. So uh, this is just basically steps for uh, children or the students who just don't belong anywhere. So, uh, you know, the first three are, you know, can be understood from the name itself, but the fourth one can be a bit complex. So maybe I should explain it uh, beforehand. You know, the same feelings of inadequacy is just basically, you know, 
it's just basically these students themselves are just you know giving up on themselves you know you just want to don't they don't want to do anything you know they don't want to participate in classroom activities they don't want to do their homeworks uh they're just basically you know in the classroom just standing not doing anything uh that is displaying feelings of inadequacy uh you know uh, a student can fail these uh goals and uh by just failing each and every one of them it will always lead to displaying feelings of inadequacy you know if they have uh achieved the first three they will still uh you know go to the fourth goal here and if they have failed all the first three uh goals they will still end up at the fourth goal again so how do we us teachers, you know, uh, you know, fight off these uh, attempts to, you know, gaining control and gaining revenge and all that. So, uh, how do we combat these four goals? So, how do we combat gaining attention? So, what you can do is that you can ignore the attention seeking, you know, you know, being done by the student itself or themselves, and you know, use it. Uh, you know, use some positive reinforcements when you know the student itself themselves. Uh, showing uh, positive behaviors and just, you know, distract them, you know, distract the students by just offering alternate actions and choices uh, whilst they're trying to gain your attention. So, but you can uh, offer some uh, actions like, you know, please could you hand out the books, you know, uh, just ignore them and just distract them. Uh, that will just, you know, uh, eliminate their attempt of gaining attention. So how do we uh, combat gaining power and control is that, you know, you can just focus on all of the good behavior in the class, uh, whilst, of course, ignoring the attempt to gain power done by the uh, student themselves. And you should never, ever, ever just, you know, engage in a battle for power with the students because, you know, you're an adult and they're probably a child, so you should not just uh, engage in a battle for power in the classroom itself is unhealthy. So just focus on the good behavior and ignore them again. So how do we combat gaining revenge is that, you know, uh, once you are trying to combat this, you should remember that, you know, uh, the students want to belong somewhere, you know, and, you know, revenge seeking is just a way of that. Uh, so what you can do in order to combat this is that you should just, you know, uh, let the student know, uh, whilst they're away from other students, you know, and let them know that you care about them, let them know that uh, you care about their education, and, you know, no matter what they do, you're going to support them, and you're going to want the best for them. You know, this is just a pretty good way of, you know, combating these attempts of gaining revenge. So for the last one, displaying feelings of inadequacy, you know, uh, how do we combat that? I mean, I explained what displaying feelings of inadequacy to you, but let's just uh, remind that remind you again. It's just that you know this day in this stage, your student just you know uh, gives up on themselves, uh, and, you know, which you know this basically means that they're not going to do anything in the classroom, they're not going to participate and do their homeworks and all that. So what you can do is that you know uh, you can try to make them recognize that you know, achieving small things are also a great success. Uh, so you know, by showing them interest and by showing them how to recognize you know, uh, these sort of little behaviors, uh, these sort of little achievements, uh, you know, uh, they are going to you know, get out of this stage slowly uh, but surely. And yeah, this was uh, Rudolf Drakers' uh, classroom management theory, you know. Uh, this was it. So I hope I can see you uh, in the next week. So see you later until then.